New York Democratic Congressman Tom Swazi is a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us from Capitol Hill, sir. Yeah, Brianna, thanks for having me on. Your chairman, Richard Neal, is leading this tax fight for Democrats. He's found this way to request as the chairman of the committee to get to try to at least get these tax returns. What is your response to Secretary Mnuchin's comment that it's an individual decision by presidents whether to make their returns public? Well, that's true. That's the law. The law is that uh, it's not required that they reduce their that they release their taxes. But for the past 40 years, every president, every vice president has released their tax returns. But again, the request from Chairman Neal has nothing to do with that. The request from Chairman Neal has to do with the fact that under the IRS manual, since the Carter administration, the IRS is required to audit every single president and vice president. And he's asking for the president's tax returns and for the IRS to tell us, have they conducted the audit the way it's required under their own procedures and processes? And the secretary, Secretary Mnuchin, acknowledged for the first time that the White House and Treasury lawyers held what he called it informational, so informational conversations about this request for the president's tax returns. Mnuchin said he personally had not been involved. What did you think about that? I think that's smart on his part if he's not involved, uh, because this is really about policy, not about politics. And we shouldn't let, the administration shouldn't let this become politicized from their end. Uh, they, the law is very clear that the IRS, through the, the, the Treasury Secretary, through the IRS, is required to release the tax returns when requested by the Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. And they should comply with that. The law is very clear. It shall release these, these documents. Uh, so they should not politicize it. They should keep it focused on the policy issues that the Chairman is trying to keep it focused on. The, this issue of politicizing it, you have Republicans and people in President Trump's corner who say it is becoming politicized. We actually, and we had someone who wasn't in President Trump's corner. We had the former IRS commissioner, Mark Everson, on our show uh, last week. And he said that this is really troubling, that going this route, uh, that this makes the IRS become politicized. And that's actually really damaging to American institutions. What do you think of that? Well, actually, we shouldn't politicize the IRS. In fact, under the Carter administration, they changed the rules and they said every president and vice president should be audited by the IRS. That was so that nobody in the IRS would have to make a political decision or use their discretion or be accused of making a political decision. Every single president, every single vice president is supposed to be audited by the IRS. And they found things under President Nixon, for example, in the old days, half a million dollars more he had to pay in taxes. Because the president has really called so much attention to this issue by becoming the first president in 40 years to not release his taxes, people have started to dig in here. I didn't know about this provision of the IRS manual before. I don't think most Americans know about that provision in the IRS manual. Now people are looking at this much more carefully. We need to see in a very targeted and focused way, is the IRS doing its job to actually audit the president and the vice president. I mean, there's all kinds of procedures and processes. The president's taxes are supposed to be kept in a special safe. They're supposed to be kept in orange folders. Nobody's supposed to look at it except for the people who are doing the audit. Have they done that work? So the, president's, uh, the uh, president has called more attention to this issue by not releasing his tax returns in the first place. Chairman Neal has since said since day one he became chairman, we're going to be very deliberate, very judicious. We're going to make sure we use judgment that will hold up to scrutiny by others and by a court of law. We cannot I, politicize this. I, I want to ask you while I have you here about something that one of your colleagues has said. Ilhan Omar was talking about presidential advisor Stephen Miller, who really is pulling the strings at the White House when it comes to immigration policy now. This is what she tweeted. She said, Stephen Miller is a white nationalist. The fact mm. that he still has influence on policy and political appointments is an outrage. I just, I wonder, do you share in that assessment that Stephen Miller is a white nationalist? Well, I don't know whether Steve Miller is a white nationalist or not a white nationalist. I do know that his anti-immigrant rhetoric and his policies are wrong-headed, misguided, and they're bad and they're hurtful. And uh, we need to solve this problem related to immigration, which you and I have discussed before on this show. But we're not going to do it by having this harsh so, but look, rhetoric. But I want to ask. That, to that point, you said we're not going to do it having this harsh rhetoric. Is it a problem that the Congresswoman used that language? Does that make these discussions more difficult? 
I think that his policies make it more difficult, and I think that that type of talk from her also makes it more difficult. We need to take the temperature down. We need to find common ground. We need to solve problems on very serious issues that affect real people's lives and try and make the country work better than it's currently working. And whether we, either side using harsh rhetoric and not talking about solutions and common ground is, is hurtful to the country. Congressman, thank you so much. Congressman Tom Swazi joining us there from the House side of the Capitol. We appreciate it. Thank you, Brianna.